Live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City here at uh, Big Data NYC, hashtag Big Data NYC for Big Data Week where we are covering Hadoop World Strata Conference and all the action around Big Data in New York City. That means business, that means technology. I'm John Furrier, the founder of the Cube, where we go out to the events, in this case create an event, Big Data NYC, and extract a signal from the noise and share that with you. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. And our guest this segment is uh, entrepreneur, executive, now venture capitalist, Chris Lynch with Atlas Ventures. Welcome uh, back to the Cube, Chris. Great to see you. Same here. Um, so I'll stop meeting like this. This is what the fourth <laughs> or fifth year. <laughs> so you shaved your head again uh, yes. for St. Baldrick, but also grew grew some uh, hair on the face there. Nice facial hair. We've got yes. the Boston strong. Get Get beard. Tug. Hashtag, Red Sox. Uh -huh. Hashtag Go ahead. get beard. Have a tug. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Good luck. get beard. Um, you have always been an angel investor, now a venture capitalist. So, what, you know, just what's your take around what's happening right now? The ecosystem, the community, the, the technology, just what's going on? Well, I think a couple things are happening, John. First of all, you know, we all know that there's this hype cycle, right? So, we're hearing a lot of noise in the market about IPOs and, and um, you know, big time exits. I think that there are a couple of bellwethers, right? Tableau would be one, Splunk the other. So clearly, the market's hungry for IPOs in the big data space, and we can, we can sustain those. Um, but I think we have to sort out the contenders from the pretenders. There's a lot of people talking a good game, but um, their businesses, in my opinion, don't have the discipline, the growth, the linearity that you need to create a quality <laughs> public company. What, in what areas? What, be specific, if you can, on that area. Sure. I mean, I think that um, there are a number of companies in the marketplace that have been out of raised lots of capital, been around for quite some time now, that have been talking about IPO, but there isn't any visible means of how they're going to get there from you know, a revenue perspective. At the end of the day, you know, hype can only take you so far. It might get you to a filing, but at the end of the day, if you're going to have a sustainable market cap, you're going to have to show the market how are you have a business model that makes money. Do you think some of these companies are overfunded? Well, I don't know if they're overfunded. I think the market, no one's gated by market here, right? So, so from a from you mean a market, the market's so huge. Yeah, the right. market's so okay. huge. Check. I think got that box at right. a micro level, I think companies should be investing behind revenue and behind a business model. I do think that there are companies out there that have raised a lot of money and spent a lot of money before really figuring out what business model, you know, they're going to pursue. So Tableau and Splunk are two good examples. I mean, obviously the stocks are doing well, huge multi multi billion dollar valuations with a lot of growth. They're not making money because they you know they're pouring it back into the business. You like that model? I do. For, for a company where we understand the model and we can measure and, and understand when they're going to get profitable and how they get profitable, I think investing in the business makes sense. Um, that's a little bit different than some of the private companies out there, venture-backed companies that are sort of spending money searching for a model. Trying to figure out where the, where the revenue dollars are. I mean, Amazon's kind of the same way. I mean, they're essentially, you know, they're, they're profitless, but they're killing it. Right. So do you see kind of a similar dynamic emerging in the big data field where a couple of large companies will be able to drive growth and, and valuation and then use that momentum to compete, you know, almost as a competitive weapon in the marketplace? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the advantages and one of the reasons to IPO is to be able to use that currency, you know, to acquire and accumulate assets and resources, particularly in a market, you know, that is a hyper growth market like big data. What are, the, um, what are the sectors that you're tracking where, where you're making some investments that you're excited about? Sure. So from my perspective, we've talked about this before, but I think there are three, there are three areas that, that um, have the, most pr um, the, the maximum challenges and opportunities in big data. And their scale, their security, um, and simplicity. And I think the companies that are focusing, focusing on overcoming those obstacles are the ones that are going to really um, transform the market and really allow the potential of big data to be realized. So I'm investing in companies that are addressing all three of those areas. Some are addressing all of them, some are addressing them to varying degrees. But I'd say that um, those three technical areas and then just in general, I'm focused on applications 
and businesses that can be disruptive leveraging big, big data versus, you know, pure data plays, platform plays. So when we think about uh, Big Data Week here and Big Data NYC, our event we're having, and also the uh, Strata Conference, which is now jam-packed. They're talking about the Javits Center. Um, huge event. I mean, were you, are you surprised by the magnitude of the interest and the commercialization? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking on the way over here in the, in the cab, I, I think the three of us were here, I don't know if it's four or five years ago, if my memory serves me correct, it was obviously very different. You know, it was sort of a grassroots type thing. I think, it, you know, it's sort of a sign of the times. You know, this feels like, you know, a very commercial, you know, proprietary event. Um, you know, and it sort of lights my competitive fires because it makes me think about sort of the, you know, the days when I was competing as a startup against, you know, the big fascist ecosystems of proprietary oligopolies. Big money. Basically. Yeah, big money, um, closed systems, and I think it's it's kind of ironic, right? Because big data is about open systems and community, and here we are, two blocks away from, you know, stuff that you guys, you know, really created. No, we were definitely there. I mean, Hadoop ecosystem, John, uh, John and Dave at the show, the Cube. But when we first started four years ago, it was you know, it was Cloud Arrow. It was really the only vendor Horton Rose hasn't even launched yet. So we were present at creation as part of that ecosystem. So, you know, the community being part of that community has been real rewarding for us, and uh, we've got a great time. And you know, we have we have no complaints around our role in the community. We love being here. Now, granted, we're here at the Warwick, but uh, just it's just a sign of the times. I mean, I think at the end of the day, what's great about our new the new the new era of of social media is that the democratization truly is that people are talking and the community votes with their feet, they vote with their code. And uh, you know, we have certainly great endorsement here. We're sold out in terms of the, the slots available to be on. Uh, great underwriting support from the community validating the cues. It's, it's been fantastic. Can I say it more concisely? Are you doing it for the love, not for the money? We're doing it for the love. I mean, we could make, I mean, we've had, I had someone say to me last night, you know, you guys can make so much money with this cube. And we're like, yeah, but we're not O'Reilly. We're not, in it for just the money. We want to support and grow operations, but we, there are ways we could make money on this, but we don't. We want to create open source content because really no one's doing it. It's a competitive opportunity for us to be uh, a part of the community and give back, but also more importantly, share information. So yeah, we could make money. Well, we have some great sponsors who allow us to, to come to events and, and to drive great content. You know? So that's our model, right? You get guys that come in, they want us at their events, you know, big players like an EMC or an IBM or, or, or an HP, and they help us get to these smaller events. You know, we did an event at MIT this year, we did an event at, at Stanford, we've done some stuff with, with Atlas Venture, we do some stuff with Hack Reduce. So it allows us, you know, well over half of the events that we do are, you know, just pure editorial. Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing. Things are sort of full circle because obviously you're aware that EMC and IBM are very staunch supporters of Hack Reduce. You know, re really, and you know, they've never tried to to um, commercialize that yeah. participation, which you know I really applaud. And you know, there was a time when they were sort of part of the proprietary world, and you know, they've really opened up those companies. So it's, and I think to great, you know, to their benefit and to the community's co um, benefit. So it's interesting to see an event like this become closed and sort of, you know. Um, sort of just not what, you know, what well, I we got a good expecting. spot here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see the Hilton from right where we are. So what's the hot companies out there that you're involved in that you see is coming out of the woodwork that's, that's hot from an investment standpoint, both angel investor and also as a venture investor? Sure, sure. So there are a couple of hot ones. So one, of course, is Newtonian, which uh, we just announced that uh, we put four and a half million dollars into um, the company is where artificial intelligence meets business intelligence, and actually the, the bar I gave them was to predict who was going to win the World Series, and back in spring training they predicted the Red Sox, and it looks like they're getting pretty close to um, meeting that prediction. Um, another great one is Data Robot, which you uh, may not have heard a lot about. They're in stealth mode, but I'm really excited about them, and you know, Squirrel, I think, I heard is one best to show here. Um, you know, uh, from my Cumulos, let's talk, about, let's talk about Squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel's a company that we, we know real well in, in, yep. in uh, uh, being close to some of your investments, seeing that directly emerging right out of the woodwork. Cumulos now hot, the hottest thing. Um, and their role in that was pretty significant, well documented. So talk about uh, what's new with them. What do you, what's, can you share some data about what traction is? Obviously they got a round of funding. What else is going on? Sure, sure. So, so we don't release specific numbers, but I can tell you that quarterly revenues are now measured in millions. And um, they've got customers in telco, banking, finance, insurance, healthcare, and um, you know I think the sky's the limit for them. And I think this is going to be their year. 
and everybody's talking about security, right? Two years ago, nobody mentioned security. Even, even a year ago, nobody. About last summer, last June, you really started to hear the community talk more and more and more about security. So th that has to give Secure, sec security Security is the killer app for big data this year. Yeah, so, and then Adapt's the other one. They won best in show last year, right? Yep, that's right. How are those right. guys doing? They're doing terrific. I think some of the guys are out in the audience here. Um, obviously, we've, se we've seen where they say the, the best form of flattery is um, copying somebody. So we've seen with Impala that we had a great idea and the market's trying to follow. But, you know, we think that we've got a two-year lead and certainly thought leadership. And uh, we've got some exciting products that are coming out uh, in the next coming months that we really think are going to change the game and distance us from the crowd. And you mentioned Newtonian. That's, I mean, that's a decent chunk of change for an early stage company like that. They're doing some amazing things. I, if you hit their website and <laughs> watch that video, it's mind blowing. Um, talk a little bit about what they do because it's really unique. Sure. <coughs> so, so basically what they do is they provide a data scientist in a box. So they're the next generation of, of analytics intelligence. You, they ingest any data type through machine learning. They determine through the through looking at trends, what questions to ask, and they answer the questions. No human beings involved. And then they tell you what action to take based on that. So they kind of reverse engineer the, <laughs> the, whole, the whole pipeline and then, and then ultimately hand it to a human to say, okay, this is what we would recommend. That's right. Traditional systems would use analytics. You have to kind of know what you're looking for. Here you don't have to know what you're looking for. And they find patterns in data that human beings and legacy systems simply can't find. Okay, Chris Lynch, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We are live in New York City for Big Data NYC. We uh, get the movers and shakers, newsmakers, entrepreneurs, CEOs, venture capitalists here on theCUBE. We're announcing products. We announced a startup yesterday. This is theCUBE, I'm John with Dave, and we'll be right back after this short break.